Hey and welcome, Miss Kira Speaks. Baby, this is take number two. Let's get this housekeeping out of the way. Please hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications because you already know how I do and stick around with your girl until the end of this video. Also, I wanna say welcome to any newcomers. I hope that you will subscribe, share with a friend and return for future content. To my subscribers, thank you so much for your continued support. I appreciate you, I do. Now, this is typically the location where I record my pajama Sundays. Even got a new chair for y'all. Haven't done a pajama Sunday in a while, so we'll get back to that. But what we're here for today is another one of my watch lists, you guys. Now, as you may know, my watch list typically consists of TV, streaming, and film, old, new, and in between, some I've watched before and some I'm currently watching. I will give you my mostly spoiler-free breakdown of two or more shows with some additional recommendations. But this one right here is our March new releases watch list, guys, where I give you a couple of things that I think maybe you might wanna check out. I wanted to get this out on the first weekend in March, but if you watched my last watch list, you already know, so here we are. As I said earlier, I like to try and give you guys some variety on these lists. So we're gonna get a uh, assortment of different genres, including reality. We're gonna have some film thrown in there, you know. And we all have been loving our streaming lately, so you're also gonna get some of that. Now what you also will get is a lot of black content. Sorry, not sorry. It's not the only thing you'll get, but I do tend to like to highlight it. Let's go ahead and jump into this list and we're gonna handle this one kinda how I did my Black History Month watch list and we're just gonna go ahead and put it in release order. Now, the month did start off a little rocky. On March 1st, BET bought us The Wind Down with Mary J. Blige, which is rated TV 14. It's about an hour runtime, including your commercials and it's a talk show at night but not more of a let's have some wine and have a little girl talk and as our description indicates it says mary j blige uncorks a bottle of wine with her guests as they sit down to have insightful and honest conversation y'all know our girl mary has wine too right have any of you guys tried it? I haven't gotten to it, but if you have, get down in the comments and let me know how you liked it. Now, the only thing that I wasn't sure I'm gonna give you this on the list is so far I've only seen two episodes. I don't know necessarily what happened to this show, so if you know, let me know. The first episode that premiered, it was Karisha and Taraji. That one was really good. And the second episode was 50 Cent. On March 2nd, BET Plus bought us the crime drama titled Legacy. Now it's rated TV 14 and the runtime is about 30 to 45 minutes and I am gonna give you a huge warning. This is another one that BET did that's only three episodes long like the one I mentioned I think in January um, called Angel. Not quite sure why BET Plus is doing things this way but the description did sound really good. Notorious mobster Guy Simmons owns the streets, but as he fights for his life, a sibling rivalry ignites what could jeopardize his legacy and criminal enterprise. This Manny Haley production stars Ving Rhames and also features AJ Johnson, Lisa Ray, and Clifton Powell. So we got like a little mini baby boy reunion. Like I said, it's only three episodes, so do not shoot the messenger. Go ahead and take that up with BT+. I've heard good things about this one, but I have not watched it yet. The whole three episode thing has me a little reluctant because they get you into it and it'll be so good and then it's over. Also on March 2nd, WE TV bought us the reality series Omarion Presents Omega, The Gift and The Curse. It's rated TV 14 and it's a five part series and they're about 50 minutes each. We take an in-depth look at Omarion's evolution in the music industry, featuring never seen before interviews, rehearsals, tour, footage, and performances. Now, you know I love docs and I also like behind the scenes stuff, so I was here for this one. Now, full disclosure, 
I missed the first episode, so I only started at episode two, and I was a little bit lost, but not really, because what your girl decided to do is, since I have so many streaming along with cable, y'all, don't come for me, y'all, I canceled all black, and then I was unable to watch the first episode anyplace else, so I was like, you know what? It is what it is. Moving along, March 3rd bought us Creed 3. In theaters, this drama sports movie is rated PG-13 with a runtime of an hour and 51 minutes. Still dominating in the boxing world, Adonis Creed is thriving in his career and family life. When Damien, a childhood friend and former boxing prodigy, resurfaces after serving time in prison, he's eager to prove that he deserves a shot in the ring. This is a directorial debut for Michael B. Jordan and the movie we know stars Michael B. Jordan, Jonathan Majors, and also features Tessa Thompson and lots more. Now, I probably won't go to the theaters to see this one, but they had me at Michael B. Jordan and Jonathan Majors boxing. March 3rd also bought us Operation Fortune that released in theaters. This action comedy is rated R and has a runtime of an hour and 54 minutes. Elite spy Orson Fortune must track down and stop the sale of deadly new weapons technology wielded by billionaire arms broker George Simmons. Reluctantly teamed up with some of the world's best operatives, Fortune and his crew recruit Hollywood's biggest movie star, Danny Francesco, to help them on their globe-trotting mission to save the world. Directed by Guy Ritchie, the movie stars Jason Statham and Hugh Grant. Now, I am a huge fan of both of these gentlemen, so I probably will check this one out when it hits streaming. Also on March 3rd on Prime Video, we got Daisy Jones and the Six. This drama series is rated 16 plus according to Prime Video, we're just gonna call it TVMA, and is 10 episodes, new episodes on Friday, it's 45 to 50 minutes each. In 1977, Daisy Jones and the Six were on top of the world. The band had risen from obscurity to fame. And then after a sold out show at Chicago Soldier Field, they called it quits. Now, decades later, the band members agree to reveal the truth. I have heard really good things about this series, but I haven't had a chance to check it out yet. Have you guys seen Daisy Jones and the Six? Can you guys hear my laptop? I decided to work off of the laptop directly this time, but child. Released on March 4th is Black Girl Missing on Lifetime. This crime drama is rated TV 14 and has a runtime of an hour and 28 minutes. That's without commercials. A black mother enlists the help of a dedicated community of internet sleuths to try and find her missing daughter. After the authorities and media quickly dismiss her case and focus on the search of a missing white girl instead. Baby, we all know the story, and this one is inspired by several different stories. The movie stars Garcelle Beauvais, and I saw this one and it was pretty good. So if you like Lifetime movies, it's, you know, it's giving you your typical Lifetime movie. On March 4th, Netflix bought us Chris Rock's Selective Outage, and I believe this is their first live stand-up. Obviously, it's rated TVMA, and the runtime is an hour. The comic delivers a set on yoga pants, spoiling kids, the Kardashians, and the incident at the Academy Awards with actor Will Smith. Now, I didn't get a chance to check this one out live, but I think I watched it the next day and it was okay. I had a few laughs. If you're into Chris Rock, then this one may be for you. The month heats up on March 5th as Bravo bought us a reality series titled SWV and Escape the Queens of R&B. It's a six part limited series rated TV 14 and the runtime is about an hour each episode. Following their epic versus performance, the ladies of SWV and Escape reunite once again to prepare for a show that promises to reignite their music careers. There is much at stake for these powerhouse women as they navigate different stages in their lives, both personally and professionally. 
Now this one is only six episodes and I think that we really needed eight, bravo. But they did come out the door swinging. SWV is giving you calm and mature and family while Escape is bringing you that drama. Like I said, personally, I think we needed eight episodes. I don't know if this is a little teaser, kind of how BET Plus is doing us for Bravo to give us another season, I suppose, maybe. What do you think? But if you enjoy this show and you're looking for some live reality talk on YouTube, head on over to Nita the Diva and Monique Nicole on Thursdays. They are going to give you that reality talk, baby. On March 10th, Netflix bought us Luther the Fallen Sun. I think it was in theaters on February 2nd or 24th. I didn't write the date down. This thriller is rated R and has a runtime of two hours and nine minutes. A serial killer terrorizes London while disgraced detective John Luther sits behind bars. Haunted by his failure to capture the cyber psychopath who now taunts him. Luther decides to break out of prison to finish the job by any means necessary. This one stars Idris Elba. Enough said. Also on March 10th in theaters, we got Scream 6. This horror slasher film is rated R and has a runtime of two hours and two minutes. Four survivors of the ghost face murders leave Woodsboro behind for a fresh start in New York City. However, they soon find themselves in a fight for their lives when a new killer embarks on a bloody rampage. The movie stars Courtney Cox, I believe, Jenna Ortega, and Hayden Panettiere. I don't think I've seen past either Scream 2 or 3, Judge Your Mama, but for those of y'all that enjoy Scream, go ahead and check this one out. March 10th on Hulu, we got Unprisoned, a comedy series rated TVMA. It's eight episodes and they are about 30 minutes each. A messy but perfectionist relationship therapist and single mom's life is turned right side up when her dad gets out of prison and moves in with her and her teenage son. Baby, can you imagine another Onyx Collective joint? This one stars Kerry Washington and Delroy Lindo. Hulu dropped all episodes on the first day and I said your girl can't keep up, but I ended up being sick and home not feeling well, so I did end up watching the whole season in like two days. It's a comedy and it's a cute little binge and I love both Kerry Washington and Delroy Lindo, so for me, it was a no-brainer. And I hope that they give this one another season. March 11th on Lifetime, we have Girl in the Closet. This drama is rated TV 14 and has a runtime of an hour and 27 minutes without commercials. After her mother suffered an aneurysm, 10-year-old Cameron was adopted by her Aunt Mia. Soon after coming to her new home, she turns to her faith when she finds herself imprisoned in a house of horrors with little human contact. Based on real life events, the movie stars Tammy Roman and her daughter Jazz and also has an appearance by Remy Ma. This movie had me so mad at Tammy, y'all. She got her acting on and she plays a pretty good bad guy. During the month of March, Lifetime was giving us a premiere every Saturday. I didn't get to check them all out. Two others that were on the list were Every Breath She Takes and the Hillside Adoption Scandal. I didn't get a chance to check those out, but if you like and you're a Lifetime person, go ahead and give those a try too. March 16th, Peacock bought us a brand new reality series called Queen's Court. It's rated TV 14, it's 10 episodes and the episodes are around an hour each. These ladies appear to have it all, a family, career, money, and worldwide fame. For all their massive successes, the one area they have not ruled is matters of the heart. Now in their 40s, these mature queens are leaving the drama behind and opening their hearts to find their king. Evelyn Lozada, Tamar Braxton, and Nivea Starr with help from Holly Robinson and Rodney Pete. Peacock dropped all 10 episodes on the first day. 
can we say overwhelming? But then there were also spoilers on social media as to the end of the series. And this is where social media gets to me, y'all. Like, y'all couldn't wait and give the folks at least a good week if you're going to drop all 10 episodes. But I digress. I did watch all the episodes and I did enjoy the series. I know a lot of people are not a fan of these ladies, Nivea excluded, but there was a sense of maturity, it was camaraderie, and sisterhood more than competition. And I really like that, so I think that they should do additional seasons and just bring on different groups of ladies. March 17th in theaters, we got the action-adventure Shazam! Fury of the Gods, rated PG-13 with a runtime of 2 hours and 10 minutes bestowed with the power of the gods. Billy Batson and his fellow foster kids are still learning to juggle teenage life and their adult superhero alter egos. When a vengeful trio of ancient gods arrive on earth in search of the magic stolen from them long ago, Shazam and his allies get thrust into a battle for their superpowers, their lives, and the fate of the world. The movie stars Zachary Levi, Asher Angel, Megan Good, and more. As you know, my guys are into superheroes, so we will be there. But the way life has been lifing, we probably won't get there till we're all on Easter break. I went into the first one with low expectations and was pleasantly surprised. Now, I've heard that's not the case with this one, and a lot of people were disappointed. But like I said... My kids are into superheroes, so we will be there regardless. Also on March 17th in theaters, we got the comedy A Snowy Day in Oakland. Rated PG-13 with a runtime of an hour and 32 minutes. A beautiful psychologist from San Francisco decides to end a stalled romance with her high-profile psychiatrist boyfriend and business partner. She moves on with her life by opening her own practice in a vacant office space in Oakland. We have an all-star cast with this one. The movie stars Keith David, Nicole Irie Parker, Michael Jai White, Loretta Devine, and Marla Gibbs. Also on March 17th, Prime Video bought us the thriller series Swarm. It's rated 18 plus or TVMA. It's seven episodes around 30 minutes each. An obsessed Houston-based fan goes to increasingly violent lengths for her favorite R&B singer. Ciao, it was a lot created by Janine Neighbors and Donald Glover. The series stars Dominic Fishback mwah, for her, um, with appearances by Damson Idris, Chloe Bailey, and more. It was only seven episodes and they were about 30 minutes each, so since I was homesick, I binged them all in like one day. Originally, what I wanted to do is a watch party with you guys who had Prime. But like I said, life was life and your girl was sick. But it was so good. And so many folks had so much to say about it. So if I do end up getting some downtime by chance in the summer, I think I'm going to go back and recap, recap some of the old stuff then. So just go ahead and keep those notifications on. March 23rd, Netflix brings us a drama series titled The Night Agent. It's rated TVMA. It's 10 episodes, about 45 minutes each. While monitoring an emergency line, an FBA agent answers a call that plunges him into a deadly conspiracy involving a mole at the White House. The series stars Gabrielle Basso. I haven't got a chance to check this one out yet, but this was another series that I heard so many good things about that it's definitely on my list. March 24th in theaters, we got the action movie John Wick Chapter 4. Rated R, it has a runtime of 2 hours and 49 minutes. With the price on his head ever increasing, legendary hitman John Wick takes his fight against the high table global as he seeks out the most powerful players in the underworld from New York to Paris to Japan to Berlin. This movie stars Keanu Reeves and I think I only saw the first John Wick, I know, 
I know. So <laughs> it'll be a minute before I get to this one. March 24th on Disney Plus, we have the comedy family series Saturdays. It's rated TVG and has a runtime of around 25 minutes. And I think we're getting 15 episodes for the season. Now, I think it actually comes March 23rd, the day before on Disney. For those of you that have Disney and want to see it that way. But if not, you only have Disney Plus. March 24th is the date for you. This coming of age comedy takes place on the best day of the week. Saturday. 14 year old Paris Johnson and her best friends hone their roller skating skills at Saturdays, a local skating rink in Chicago. They form a skate crew determined to show and prove that they have the hottest skate routines on the planet. In this series, we're going to get appearances from Golden Brooks and Omar Gooding. It looks like a cute little series that I can probably watch with my youngest. March 26 on TLC is the new reality series Seeking Brother Husband. Documenting the ups, downs, and everything in between as polyandrous relationships navigate boundaries and life-changing decisions while working to add additional husbands. I think it's four couples total for this series and child if this is your cup of tea, then go ahead and give it a watch. March 26 on FX on Hulu, we have Great Expectations. It's a drama history miniseries rated TVMA with a runtime of a little under an hour. And I think it's going to be six episodes total in the series. The series follows Orphan Pip, who spent his childhood as a blacksmith apprentice and suddenly receives a windfall from an unknown benefactor that allows him to travel to London and enter high society. Not necessarily a new concept, but if you integrate expectations, this one may be for you. March 29th on Netflix, we have a docuseries called Emergency NYC. Rated TVMA, it's eight episodes with a runtime of about 45 minutes each. This gripping docu-series follows New York City's frontline medical professionals as they balance the intensity of their work and personal lives. If you like docu-series, give this one a try. Also, March 29th on Netflix is the crime thriller miniseries Unseen. Rated TVMA, it's six episodes, about 45 minutes each. A house cleaner desperately searches for her husband as a dreaded criminal syndicate dredges up past tragedies and ultimately drives her to violence. The series stars Gail, I'm gonna put her name on the screen cause I'm gonna try not to butcher it, who's the mom from Blood and Water. So needless to say, I will definitely be checking this one out. March 31st in theaters, we get the drama mystery, A Thousand and One. It's rated R and has a runtime of an hour and 56 minutes. Unapologetic and free-spirited Inez kidnaps her six-year-old son, Terry, from the foster care system. They set out to reclaim their sense of home, identity, and stability in a rapidly changing New York City. Talk about a mother's love. This film stars Tiana Taylor, and I will definitely be checking this one out. Lastly, on our list, also on March 31st, we have the drama comedy on Apple TV titled Tetris. It's rated R with a runtime of an hour and 58 minutes. Based on the true story of American video game salesman Hank Rogers and his discovery of Tetris in 1988. When he sets out to bring the game to the world, he enters a dangerous web of lies and corruption behind the Iron Curtain. This one is for the gamers. What are you guys looking forward to seeing this month? Is there something that I missed on the list? Drop it down in the comments or just let me know that you stopped by. Don't forget to check out my community tab, my community tab for series returning in March. So I approach things a little differently this time. I'm still trying to find my groove in this YouTube space. And I still want to continue to do things I like, like this and Pajama Sundays. I'm getting back to it, I promise. But the frequency is going to vary at this point. Like this is probably going to be the only watch list for the month of March. But in the meantime, if you're looking for more, please check out some of my other watch lists or content. 
Keep your notifications on as always, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.